Today we're doing section 9-2, Compound Inequalities. Homework is page 408, 1 through 37 odd, and 38 through 45 all. New vocabulary is compound inequalities, conjunction, disjunction, union, and intersection. All right, so today's objective is to solve compound inequalities involving and statements and compound inequalities qualities involving or statements. Ors are our unions and ands are our intersections. So let's first talk about a conjunction. A conjunction is the intersection of two sets. If you're going to abbreviate the important words here are intersection and and. Make sure you're putting that. Okay, conjunctions are intersections and they are ands. They are the commonalities. So write a compound inequality that describes all real numbers greater than negative 2 and less than 5. Um, so if I'm showing greater than, than negative 2 but less than negative 5, I'm going to graph both. I'll see, and then we have less than 5. The only part we really want to see is that since this is an and statement, it's an intersection, and so we only want to see the intersection. You don't continue those lines through. If you do, and so we're going to draw it like this, because this, these are the numbers in the solution set. These are the numbers that are part of the solution set, nothing beyond. When you keep the arrow, it implies that everything beyond so we can write this as an in-between statement. We take the lower number, negative 2. Lower number always goes on the left. We say is less than x is less than, and x is less than 5. Now what you'll notice, the x is less than here is the same thing as touching here, less than. And over here, x is next to the greater than, and x is next to the greater than opening here. It always goes in this direction. Okay? Okay, we call this an in-between statement. All right, so I'm going to write an in-between statement for the next one. Okay, we take the lower number, negative 3. We take the larger number, x is in the middle, x is bigger than negative 3, and x is less than 5. And so we have our in-between statement. Now, one thing you would never do is write, 5 is greater than x. We always start with the lower number on the left. Okay, if you write it like this, I will mark it wrong. Pause the recording and try 2 and 3. Okay, you should have 4 is less than x, which is less than 10. You should have negative 8 is less than x, which is less than negative 1. All right, solving and graphing in compound inequality. Sorry if that was too fast. Um, so there's a couple different ways we can do it. I Don't look at the way on the left. I want you to look at the way on the right. I want you to write down those notes because it's faster. Now I could break this up into two inequalities. Negative 4 is less than x plus 3. And neg uh, x plus 3 is less than 7. And then solve them both. Okay, it's double the work. But I could just solve it right here. If I have this in-between statement, I can add 3 to all three parts. And now I have my in-between final answer just like I did here. So it's a lot easier to solve it the way we are on the right-hand side. Okay, just isolate your x subtracting 3 to all three parts of the inequality, and then we end up with an in-between statement. Now we can graph it. It says solve and graph. When you write your graphs, you do not need any numbers other than what you're graphing in 0. So we're starting at the negative 7. It's an open circle. All the way up to 4, it's an open circle. Notice my numbers are above the line, and the actual graphing part is below the line. 
so I can see it. Okay? This is how I expect your number lines, not with 10 different numbers. Or 11. All right. You guys try the next one. Go. All right, let's check our work. First, we're going to add 4 to all three parts. I get negative 9 is less than 3x, which is less than or equal to 3. Now I'm going to divide all three parts by 3. I get negative 3 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 1. I'm ready to graph. My number line, I need negative 3, positive 1, and 0. It's an open circle at negative 3. It's a solid circle because it's equal to. So it's solid at 1, and I draw the line to connect the parts. All right, let's try the next one. So here we're going to subtract 6 from all three sides. Inverse operation. I get negative 10 is less than or equal to negative x, which is less than or equal to 2. Now, we have a negative next to. That means negative 1 times x. So to get rid of the negative, I have to divide all terms by negative 1. Now when I do that, that's because I'm dividing by a negative 1, I have to flip the inequality. Now what we have is 10 is greater than x, which is greater than negative 2. 10 is greater than or equal to x, which is greater than or equal to negative 2. But remember with our in-between statements, we have to always show the smaller number first. Negative 2 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 10. Okay. And now we're going to graph it. I draw the number line. I draw the, connect the dots. All right. Disjunctions. Disjunctions. These are unions. These are or statements. Okay? These are or statements. So that's the big thing to remember here. It's a union and it's an or statement. Okay? Whenever you see the word or, it's a disjunction. These are likely to be two lines. Now, when it says write a compound inequality that describes all real numbers less than two, negative 2 or greater than 5, you cannot write unions as a in-between statement because there's no one line that connects them. So when we graph it, all numbers less than negative 2, x is less than negative 2, and at, or x is greater than 5. You can see there's no in-between statement. There's no one line that connects them. So a disjunction, disconnected, implies two lines. When we have a union, it's all of the numbers that are less than 2 are part of the set and all of the numbers that are greater than 5 forever and ever into infinity are part of the set. And this is the only way to write it. Pause the recording if you need to take notes. So intersection versus union. First of all, an intersection is an and statement. A union is an or. Intersections use this symbol. Unions use this symbol. If I'm talking about the shading in a Venn diagram, it's only what's in common. The commonalities is shaded. And for the union, everything is shaded. I'd like you to to um, I really like you to write some extra notes here. I'm going to block this out. Well, I guess I can leave it in. So um, the other thing I want you to add this to your list, you're writing dis... Oh. We're going to call this a conjunction. It's an and statement. And it usually looks like this. This is a disjunction. And most of the time, not all the time, we'll see at the end, but most of the time you have two lines. So add that to your notes. Pause the recording if you need to take more notes. OK. 
Okay? So now, solve and graph the compound inequality. We're just doing what they... Don't get hung up on the language. Compound inequality means there's two parts to it, right? So I'm doing the same thing. Add 3. Divide by 2. I get x is less than 5. Add 7. Divide by 4. x is greater than or equal to 10. Here's the thing to remember that could get you make this wrong, is that the first inequality is less than and the second one is greater than or equal to. So the first one is an open circle and we're going in the less than direction. The second one is a solid circle and we're going in the greater than direction. All right, let's keep going. All right, so here we go. I'm dividing. Uh, I'm going to let you guys try the next two. Go. All right, let's check our work. So I'm dividing both sides by negative 5. Now when we divide by a negative, remember we flip our inequality around. So I get x is less than or equal to negative 7. Here I'm subtracting 1. I divide by negative 2. So I'm going to flip my inequality to greater than. And I end up with x is greater than 12. x is less than se negative 7, or x is greater than 12. I'm going to draw it on the number line. We need negative 7, 12. And here you go. Final answer, look at the number line. All right. So here's our, in, our, our some exceptions. So if we're talking about intersections, just a quick reminder. Remember, that's where are they in common. Usually that's graphed with one line. Unions are usually graphed with two lines. So we can use the inequality to really describe the intersection. We know it's an intersection. It says intersection and it has the word and. I'm going to draw this. So if I go x is less than 5, I'm going here. Oops. And then I'm going to do x is less than 3. So which of the two inequalities really show the intersection? Include the intersection. So we would use x as such that x is less than 3 really shows the one where they have the commonalities. Okay. So since it's x is less than 3, we can use that inequality to describe the intersection of those two. If I'm doing a union, x is less than 5. I'm going to draw them. Okay. I'm doing x is less than 5, and then x is less than 3. Which one shows both, all the members of both groups? The one inequality that shows the members of both would, that would be x is less than 5. So we would really just draw that x is less than 5 because it's inclusive of both. And when I show my set builder notation, x is such that x is less than 5. Okay, the next one. x is less than 5 and x is greater than 3. I'm drawing them, and I'm going to make my judgment. Okay, x is less than 5. And x is greater than 3. Okay, there's only way to show that, that intersection, and we wouldn't keep writing that. So we would write it as x is such that, we could use our in-between statement, x, sorry, the smaller number is 3, is less than x, which is less than 5. Or we could write it x is such that x is greater than 3, and you have to use the word and, not or, so it's less than 5. Two ways to write that. Phew! Excuse me. Okay. Okay, next one. Oops. Still, we're going to do, now, this is a union. 
It's all the members of X is less than 5 and all the members of X is less than 3, greater than 3. So I'm going to do X is less than 5 is everything this way forever and ever. And the other one is 3. And notice it's going to pick up that spot at 5. X is greater than 3 will pick up the 5 in the list of solutions. So since it's all of the red and all of the blue, we would really just draw one line and say all real numbers since it's the combination. X is such that it's any real number. Okay, one more slide. Intersections. So here's more exceptions. X is greater than 5 and X is less than 3. So in this case, let's draw it. So we want the, the, where are they in common? So I'm drawing x is bigger than 5, x is less than 3. Since there's no commonalities, it would be here. Empty set. Null set. I try the next one. Doing x is greater than 5. X is less than 3. It's an OR statement. And there's no way to abbreviate it. So we're going to just draw it like that. And we're going to write X is less than 3 or X is greater than 5. You've got to have that OR in there. Next one is drawing them both. X is greater than 5. X is greater than 3. Where is the intersection? It would be the 5. So we would say X is such that X is greater than 5. Okay. That's the one that includes the commonalities. Okay, next one. Last one. I'm starting here as X is... Uh, greater than 5, and here's x is, is greater than 3, and we're looking for the union, so the best one that would describe it is the x is greater than 3, shows the union of both. And that, my friends, is our lesson. Have a great day.